Hey, what's going on everybody? Emo Tempest here, and I'm back. Uh, this has probably been my longest break I've had in a while. A lot of things going on, as always. You know how it is. Um, but realistically, it's just the scene has been slow. The scene has been dead for me. Uh, I don't play online. You guys know that. And I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. You know, I, I was practicing for a little while with Warrior of Lights, and then I moved on to Monks for a little bit, and that's about as far as I can say that I've played uh, the game. And yeah, so <laughs> I didn't really have much to talk about, right? I don't know. I just felt like I didn't have anything to, to give you guys. So sorry for being away for so long. Um, I appreciate everyone who stuck around. I know my, my followers uh, jumped up and down for a little bit. Um, but with that being said, we are in spoiler season again. Uh, Opus 14 is around the corner. The Crystal Abyss um, is what we know here. Uh, and there is a lot to talk about. Uh, some of my favorite things to talk about, as always, is the spoilers, the new cards. Uh, we're going to cover the pre-release kit info. Uh, we, I want to cover some more information about the set as a whole, um, things we know, and maybe things you've forgotten. And my, probably the hypest thing I'm, I'm excited for here in this set is going to be the primals. Uh, primals are finally making their way from the chapter series into, uh, you know, the Opus series, or now the Crystal series, however they want to call it, right? Um, so yeah, guys, let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, if you also, if you have any questions for me, always just leave them in the comments, man. Like, uh, I, I will get to you guys always. <laughs> All right. So first off here, we have, uh, Alcid, Puppet Master, and a new Ewan. Uh, Alcid is legendary ice, ice lightning, uh, dual color. When Alcid enters the field, you may play an ice or lightning forward, cost four less from your hand onto the field. Uh, when Alcid or an ice forward enters the field, Choose up to one forward and freeze it. When a lightning forward you control attacks, choose a forward and dull it. That's that's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. Um, I feel like this deck goes... Uh, it's, well, first of all, this card is very strong. Uh, lots of benefits here. Um, but I feel like it's going to go more into an ice deck just because of the way it plays, the way it reads. Like a, a, an ice heavier deck is all I'm saying. Um, also, just some of the quick thoughts off the top of my head, you know, bringing in uh, those those latest Opus 12, uh, Opus 13 cards, I think, um, where you can bring in extra forwards from Ice, uh, Emmett, Emmett's another good one too, um, but the possibilities are pretty endless with here between the Ice and uh, ice and Lightning forwards that you have. There's a lot of 4-drop forwards that are, you know, a little slow on their own, but when you pair him with Oxid, it should give you enough value, enough time to keep them alive or keep around or help just keep the pressure on board. Uh, Puppet Master, uh, standard unit, multiples, two drop forward, 4k, uh, dull two active forwards, choose a forward, dull it. You can only use ability once per turn. Um, nothing too impressive there, but it's cool, new art. Uh, always excited to see that. I think this is the first time we get anything Puppet Master related into this game. Uh, and you and when you and enters the field, choose one damage forward, break it. Uh, not bad for a one drop. Uh, doesn't have haste out this time, and is it unblockable this time? But still, a pretty interesting card. Um, yeah, I'll say it was the highlight here. A lot of possibilities there. We can move on though. Uh, Mashari and Calbrena, Kitone. Uh, so this is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, that we have. So this is the first time we're getting more of the Visions cards. Uh, this was the new uh, like game brought into this. Technically it's a new game, um, but they're still keeping it FFBE, which was something I was going to bring up later. Uh, but you know, my, my questions were answered when I saw these cards. So uh, two drop forward, Princess, the cost required to cast your summons you by one and cannot become zero. Remove three summons in your break zone from the game. Select one of three following actions. Draw a card, choose a forward, and return it to its owner's hand. During this turn, the cost required to cast your next summon is reduced by three. It cannot become zero. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting effect. Um, the summon decks are always, I always find so interesting because they, they always sound like they have a lot of potential, but um, the forwards are, are always like so feeble and stuff. And yeah, you can do all these big value plays, but they're only they always I always find them to be super situational and um, you know unnecessary sometimes 
So uh, we'll see where Mashiri finds her place in this game. Uh, Calbrado Monster uh, Doll. If you control three or more Earth backups, Calbrado also becomes a forward with 9k power. When Calbrado is put from the field of the break zone, select one Earth backup you control. You may put it in the break zone. When you do so, play Calbrado into the break zone, from the break zone to onto the field. Uh, that's interesting. So you could probably do this uh, multiple times through one turn. Um, but when she comes back, if you don't have the three backups, I guess you can do it twice if you're at five, right? Um, yeah, so as long as you have the backup, she's a forward. Uh, and that's interesting. But So you'll have like three blockers at five backups uh, with her alone. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Pretty good. Uh, Katone Ninja backup FFBE. Uh, EX Burst, when Katone enters the field, choose a character during this turn. It cannot attack or block. And cannot and it cannot use its use action abilities, which is that's pretty interesting. <laughs> that's pretty good for <laughs> monks. Uh, uh, dream within a dream. S tap. Choose a forward. Deal it four thousand damage. You may pay one earth. When you do so, use this special ability again without paying cost. Um, I'm curious as to know whether it, you can just continue to pay an earth CP to continue to use this ability. Um, but as long as you have CP, I suppose that seems pretty good. Uh, for a backup, this is actually pretty strong, um, and it kind of like says no to like uh, monks and a couple of other things on its entry, so that's good. Uh, helps you buy a turn in some cases. Uh, but yeah, ninjas might be getting a lot more support soon, so that's something to be on the lookout for. Ninjas are already getting pretty popular in Japan. Uh, they have a few uh, ninja Golbez decks, and ninjas have just been on the rise lately, so. Excited to see this. Next is Gesho, Larsa, and Mom Bomb uh, Ninja. There's another one. When Gesho enters the field, your opponent reveals their hand. Select one card in their hand, your opponent removes it from the game. Uh, so, kind of like a Zidane, but removes it from the game for five. Not bad. Uh, Ninja. And let's see here. I'm curious about this. This one's for you guys. Uh, I'm so like far off from the rules, I can't even tell. Like, with Edge Sense, you can pay with any colors, but the rules say that this you need lightning and fire here. Uh, what overrides what? Leave it in the comments. Uh, next is Larsa. Um, forward EX burst. When Larsa enters the field, choose a forward in your dam Choose one card in your damage zone. Uh, add it to your hand. Put a card from your hand into the damage zone. Its EX burst effect will not trigger. Uh, so that's actually super cool. The forward you control gains 2,000 power. The forward you control gains 2,000 power for every three cards with EX burst in your damage zone. Oh, this is this is interesting, right? So, being able to switch out cards into the damage zone and stuff like uh, Axstar, uh, you know, coming out too, there's going to be a lot more manipulation for this, for the damage zone, which is exciting, but also, like, we're going to be a little annoying, right? Because we hate running into those all the time. And EX Burst, if this is going to increase the amount of EX Burst decks in the, in the meta, that should be trouble. That should be annoying and troublesome for us. But it's a cool card. I like it. Um, you know, there's a good way to get rid of light and dark cards too. Um, you know, if you have extras, if you're playing decks with multiple colors in there, uh, it's a good way to fix yourself. Um, a lot of potential really there. So, uh, or also that card that you're always waiting for, but your opponent hit two of them, like in the first two damage. Yeah, that's this card fixes that. Um, so that's fun. Uh, if you control three or more fire backups. Uh, Mom Bomb also becomes a four with eight thousand power. When Mom Bomb is put from the field into the break zone, deal five damage, five thousand damage to all all forwards. Okay, so all forwards, not just your opponent. So that's a little annoying, but uh, I can see the value there. We can move on, and now is to the exciting part. Uh, <laughs> Cloud is not a primal, but uh, I did have to put him in there just because uh, I, he's a legendary and fan favorite and in full art. So. And new art. I think the list is just lots of lots of reasons. Uh, so we had Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno, EX Burst. When Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno, enters the field, choose up to two forwards your opponent controls, deal them 4,000 damage. Uh, if you're summoned or an ability of a character you control deals damage to a forward, that damage is increased by 1,000 instead. Uh, not super exciting, honestly. Uh, let me read it again. Lord of the Inferno enters the field, choose up to two forwards your opponent controls, deal them 4,000. If you're summoned or an ability of a character you control, Deals damage to a forward summon or an ability. Yeah, so it doesn't include battle damage. 
uh, damage is increased by a thousand instead. So I guess for five it just comes in, deals some damage, and then it has that um, say tuna like effect built in, which is nice as well. Um, you don't need to have it with the backup, but if you have both, that's an extra two thousand damage you're dealing uh, from from like summons and abilities. I think, or I think for her it's just summons. Um, so that's interesting. Hmm. Definitely not what I remember from reading the Primal one. Uh, I'm going to go over the Primal like, comparisons too in just a second. Because uh, I was able to find the, the Fire, the Ifrit Lord of the Infernal one. Uh, next is Cloud. Uh, forward Soldier. Uh, sick art. <laughs> and uh, Legendary. This is one of the Legendaries. Uh, if we didn't, if I didn't mention it either too, the Alcid was a Legendary. And I think that was the only other one we hit. Oh no, Larsa was a Legendary. And these two, Cloud and Ravana, are also Legendaries. So... We have a couple of the legendaries from the set already revealed. Uh, if your opponent controls any forwards, uh, Cloud gains 2,000 power, which is all the time. <laughs> so he's a 4-drop 10k. When Cloud attacks, choose a forward. It gains, if possible, this forward must block until the end of the turn. So, you know, they kind of take uh, old Galif's effect for free now, because before he was he was a 5-drop, and you needed to pay 1 Earth, I think. Uh, or I forget if it was a, like an S ability or something stupid. Uh, and then... Discard one category seven until the end of turn. Cloud gains one thousand power and cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities. Uh, so still susceptible to summons, but innate protection uh, allows him to you know survive a little bit better. Um, and discarding a seven character seven category seven card is like no problem, right? Because it doesn't say character, which means if you have extra summons, if you have uh, monsters, forwards, backups, anything, it's just boom seven category seven card, uh, which is what makes it so easy to do. You can also just use this to pump as well as to keep him safe. Um, I think overall it's a very strong card. It's clearly a little slow, but you know, once it's out there, it's going to be a problem to deal with in in the color combinations that like Seven has available to it. You know, it's either Earth Wind, Earth Fire, Earth Lightning. Uh, soon now, a little bit more with uh, with that starter deck, that new two-player starter deck coming around, like, what is it, like uh, Avalanche versus Shinra or something silly. Um, I can see this card being in high demand um, so if you guys pull it hold it and I don't know just save it for a little while um, the full arts are obviously gonna go for a ridiculously large amount this game is getting more expensive for anyone interested so uh, be on the lookout for this one uh, Ravana savior of the Nath uh, primal 14 uh, Ravana savior of the Nath can attack four times in the same turn it's pretty good Ravana savior cannot gain brave uh, okay, so if Ravana Savior is dealt is dealt damage, reduce the damage by 5,000 instead. When a character is put from the field into the break zone, activate Ravana. Okay, when a character is put from the field into the break zone, activate Ravana, Savior of the Nath. Okay, that's interesting. So, alright, so it can attack four times in one turn, which is already on its own. Cannot gain Brave, so it, you have to find other ways to utilize its effect and to get it to... Um, like keep swinging and swinging and stuff for one turn um and then any damage dealt to it is reduced by five thousand it's pretty cool uh so is i'm not saying you would play this with minwoo but just alone like uh minwoo protects it already like it'll you know it'll help like never take damage right if you reduce damage incoming damage by five and it's less than his then it will become zero um obviously this doesn't work with like bfa or anything like that but that's still pretty cool um uh, yeah, so I guess the real trick here when you're playing Ravana is you're going to have to find ways to, of like, you know, continue to activate it or effects that continue to activate uh, spells and summons and stuff. Uh, you know, in my head, the closest thing that, that comes to mind is uh, water or like even wind stuff um, letting you like activate your backups and when your backups activate you can tap to, you know, activate your forwards and stuff like that and then water has a lot of activate your forward spells, uh, summons. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it for the spoilers so far. Uh, I don't know if I've missed any that are out there, but this is all I've got. Uh, excited to bring that to you guys. Uh, now, really quickly, I'm going to pull up um, the other the other Primal's chapter one, right? Just for you guys. Um, so right here, I found it. Uh, when if your Prime enters the field, deal four thousand damage to all forwards opponent controls so right there is already a big difference um well i'll get back to the card in a sec but yeah 
Um, so this one, our version says two damage, 4,000 to two of them. Um, and you can select, which is targeting, which makes it obviously 10 times weaker. Like, And it says if you control four, uh, four fire elemental backups or more, deal them 4,000 additional damage, which this card does not have at all. Uh, if you control six or more fire elemental backups, deal them an additional 4,000 damage. So I don't know how... Um, I don't think we saw anything that read like this in, in our game except Astinian back in the day. Uh, it said if you control five or more backups. Um, I guess in chapters there was a way to can have more backups at a time. Not sure if it was like a monster or something that did that, or like, you know, a, 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 a backup that counted as two backups and would generate two CP or something. But, um, you know, when this guy would come in, first of all, he's a seven drop, fire, 10k, uh, and he would come in. And they changed his name, so he's not if for prime, he's if for Lord of the Inferno, uh, but he's still a primal. Um, I wonder if you know that effect was removed for that reason, but I think it's a little weaker, obviously, than than what he was. But it's still interesting to to see how he that they're here. Um, I hope they don't like nerf them all too much, because um, I know there's others here like Leviathan, uh, Garuda, Titan, and Odin, Ma King, Shiva, Bahamut, Ramu. Goblin King? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what some of these other ones are. Uh, oh, but these are like their their spirits, right? Like, uh, they, those are the cards that help the their respective color primals. So, I don't know. Seems a little bit weak, but it's interesting. On the, that, that's it for the spoilers, right? So, before we move on, the other things we have to know, um, it was just we can talk about things we know in case you guys haven't read these posts or, or seen them in a while. Um, this is just the information. We obviously know this is the, the box art. Uh, expected date is August 6th, but I think we're getting this maybe sooner. I'm not sure. Or, or actually a little later, right? Late in August. Um, because Opus 13 was pushed, this one's probably going to be pushed too. Uh, 130 cards. Uh, premium for the with the, two tw the 22 full arts. Um, and we also know that... Oh, here's some other art, right? So we're going to have one of him... I don't know who this is, if someone can help me out there. Um, but we have another War of the Vision guy, I can't remember. Uh, we have the FF7 remake new guy from the bike. I don't know, I can't remember what this monster is, but I remember I saw it in the chapter series as well. And we have a new Zidane. Uh, they talk about here some of the new colors um, combinations. So we have, you know, Wind Water. We'll probably have some more uh, Wind Lightning cards as well and, wind, and Water uh, Fire things combinations so um and then we do know that the other the legacy cards are going to be the dark emperor from opus 2 which is sick uh wool from opus 5 which is also exciting and then opus 6 Estinian full art uh those those uh, legacy premiums are going to be really high on those um and there's a newly added title which is uh war of the bridge uh war of the visions cards which we saw uh so these are just some of the other ones we're missing I think I have a clip here of some of the other ones we're missing too, and I'll pull that up in a sec. Um, but yeah, and here is the other stuff with the pre-release the pre kit that we know, right? So this is, I think, updated. Um, this was from May recently, so a pre-release kit should be on July 31st, which means I guess they're still set for an August 6th release. Um, but we never know what to delay. We do have this Tifa, which is uh, 14. Uh, when Tifa enters the field, you may search for one card named name Cloud and add it to your hand. When it forward, other than Tifa, you control attacks. It gains, it gains 1,000 power until the end of the turn. At 6 damage, when Tifa enters the field, you may play a category 7 character from your hand onto the field. Uh, pretty simple, but there is more 7 cards, like we said, coming. Um, we have pre-release exclusive sleeves here. Uh, so there's 60, which is nice. We have a little extra. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, that's all the news we have on the set so far. Um, but yeah, so there it is, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to pull up that image really quick. One sec. Yeah, here it is. So we showed some of these. Uh, there's a Vaughn that we don't know about, and there's a Garland we don't know about. Um... We got these spoilers from, I can't remember what site. I don't, ha I don't have all my sources for all these things, but uh, they're out there if you guys search them. Um, so we have a few more cards that we need to find. 
and hopefully see soon, but I'll hopefully be able to bring them all to you. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to have more videos now. I have a l some spare time, <laughs> if you could say, call it that, uh, to make videos and to talk about the game more. Um, but there is a lot of things I've been wanting to say about the game, which isn't like, they're not necessarily good things, but it is what it is. I still love this game. I'll still su be supporting it for a while. Um, and yeah, so thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you later.